Hey everybody, how are you doing? I just wanted to uh, come on today to talk a little bit about the cash system. My name is Druid Nicolastaclan, founder of Druid Circle, and soon uh, the Druid Order of Blessed Stone and Wood uh, and Druid University. Um, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the cash system and why the cash system is uh, fairly uh, important to understand. Um, because without a good understanding of what a caste system is, one cannot really process why today there are, say, levels to Druidry um, versus, say, oh, I don't know, um, versus levels of Druidry uh, instead of, um, say, tiers. And I think that when we look at it differently and we look at it and evaluate it from a different perspective, we come to find out that it was a caste system and there's no uh, way around that. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some uh, things that I want you to know. And as you know, I don't uh, go into it full head because I don't know what level everybody's at. And I know for a fact that I certainly am not, not at some, you know, high, high level, uh, you know, if you want a Merlin and Merlins or wizard wizards, go to one of those, uh, arch druids or something like that. Um, I'm not that, uh, nor what I want to be. So, um, let's begin. My name is, uh, again, my name is, uh, Druid Naklastaklan, and I'm going to teach you today about the caste system. All right. So one of the things that we need to think about is complete overall, the way we see things today in the world we live in. All right. Unless we live in an area that auto automatically has a caste system, it would be pretty difficult to understand what that is. There are some parts of Europe that still have caste systems. Um, and some would argue today that even here in the United States, we have a caste system. And I don't necessarily agree with that, but because of the, what, what a caste system actually is. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about. All right. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. And the reason why I want to talk about the Bronze Age and the Iron Age is because this is a pivotal point for the Druids at this point. OK. And at this point in time, the Druids were flourishing. Now, many would say, well, what is Iron Age 1 and Iron Age 2, and how does that compare with the Bronze Age? One of the things we need to understand is that the Bronze Age could have been broken down into two parts. Um, the first part of the uh, Bronze Age would have been the early Bronze Age and then the later Bronze Age, right? Um, more mid to later uh, Bronze Age. Some people would call the, the last part of the Bronze Age, Iron Age 1. And that's why you get Iron Age Druids, because a lot of people say, well, they were in the Iron Age. It all depends on what timeline you're working with. There's timelines from, uh, you know, folklorists and historians uh, that would say that, the, that, that there was no late Bronze Age, that it was Iron Age 1, and that the Iron Age in total would have been Iron Age 2. Um, I like to actually just say the Bronze Age and the Iron Age and just use those two terms because those are the terms that are probably easier to understand than getting into, you know, 1 and 2 and, and, and 3.4 and 5.8 and all that kind of stuff. I'd rather just get into uh, the heart of the matter and just call it Bronze and Iron Age. Um, because that's really when uh, the Jewish the Jewish were were, were uh, flourishing, and um, you know, uh, even before then, um, we believe that after careful analysis, that to to number this year currently even uh, to a year of what would have been the Jewish 2019 becomes the year 4366 in the year of the Jewish. Um, and with heavy calculations did I, you know, pretty much come up with that, um, because of 
I mean, now, obviously, it could have been more than that, but I think that 4366 would, would have been possibly the year. All right, so let's begin. Um, so there were socio, there's socioeconomic classes and uh, levels in, in every single society, right? And in, in almost all societies, the socioeconomic system is that which, you know, is the hinging point for many people within that society. It's how people grow. It's how people thrive. It's how people lose. It's how people um, get squashed, if you will, depending on the type of system that we, we were, were in. Now, many would argue, and, and this is not a political dissertation or, or argument, many would argue that, that, you know, socialism is the way to go, communism is the way to go. Others would say, no, capitalism is the way to go. Well, none of those terms at all, none of those terms at all work with the caste system, um, and none of those terms even work with the class system. Um even though capitalism would probably be the closest that works with a class system, that's sort of what we're fighting uh, to figure out at this point in time. Um, it, it, but when it comes to um, the, 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 the confines of each of these socioeconomic levels, we need to start thinking about, you know, that in a caste system, in a caste system, it probably would have been infinitesimal to go from one level to another level, all right? And the reason for that is because you could not reach another level without, um, I mean, by, by working for it. You could work all you want and never reach to that second level. Um, whereas a person, say, working at, at, a, at a store might work really well and, um, you know, uh, you know, at some point, um, somebody, you know, higher up, they might spark some, you know, innovation or talent. And then that person becomes, say, uh, um, a shift manager of a store and then a, a manager, uh, an assistant manager and then a manager in training and then maybe a manager and then maybe a regional manager and then maybe a district, et cetera, et cetera. Right. All because they work for it and are not given it now. And, and in some cases, obviously, yes. I mean, where, where there's families and things like that, I mean, obviously, there's, there's definite, um, uh, I would say, definite um, uh, prudency to take in, in understanding that, that in addition to that, there's some corruption, right, where we make our son or daughter the, the CEO of, a, of our company when they have no experience, right? And that happens. We call that crony capitalism. But in addition to all that, within the caste system, though, um, the, the, these levels um, that defined a people, okay, were not something that you can move from one to, to another to. You couldn't be poor, if you will, and then be middle class, if you will, and then be rich, if you will. Um, in a caste system, it was guaranteed that there were different tiers, and that's what they were called, um, tiers. So within a caste system, you have these things called tiers, and these things called tiers were permanent places that you stayed within a, within a certain socioeconomic system, and that did not change. You were born into that socioeconomic system. You stayed into the, in that econ socioeconomic system. You maintained it. And you did as best as you could within it. Um, now, within each tier of the socioeconomic system, um, which we, you know, are calling a caste versus classes that we are more accustomed to, where one can move and move and move. Like I gave the, like I gave the description of the the, the employee who becomes the, you know, shift runner who becomes a shift manager, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and climbs up. The caste system says no that there are these tiers and you cannot move out of them now a lot of people would say that each of these tiers are called castes but for the sake of the the video i want to make sure that you guys understand that the castes is they were each called castes okay um 
and you know that that's it but for for to make it a little bit easier to understand i'm calling uh them tiers for this all right now when i think of caste systems i think of um basically uh, you know india and i i think of india because everyone is basically born into a certain place you have a place and a lot in life. You cannot achieve anything more than that. You cannot achieve anything less than that. And you're guaranteed to stay in that. So that there's both safety, yet you, you can't move out of it. All right. And restraint at the same time. There's there there's a guarantee that this is where you will be, but there's also a guarantee that um you won't be able to move out of that either. Um, and in very few cases is one to move out of one specific tier and into another specific tier. It just doesn't happen. Um, so if you look into the caste systems of, of India, you'll, you'll, you'll get a better appreciation of what castes are. And, you know, that moving out of the caste system is basically... Um, you know, uh, it, 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 moving out of a caste system is is where, you know, you move out of your, your where, where one stays in and within their tier. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is that the caste system is completely different than the class system that we have. Like I said, in the caste system, you cannot move up or down. You stay where you're at. But a class system means that you do have things called ranks and that these ranks are where you are and you can move up it or down it depend on whether or not you and I and I wrote your decisions lead to necessary outcomes. And those outcomes are basically based on your decisions. So if you go to work late every day and you get fired. Well, you get fired because you are not an employee that is able to maintain the responsibility of having a job. If you go to work and you steal, well, then you're going to get you're going to get the X. You know, I like to always say the, the, the example of uh, Trump saying you're fired. And that's basically what happens. But if you go to work on time, sometimes early, you you always have a clean outfit on. You always look your best. You 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 speak in a manner uh, that 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 is that is communicative and inviting for for the consumers of and patrons of that business or whatever the case is. I I like to say that this is exactly is exactly what a caste system, um, uh, what a class system is it's the, the it's when your 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 choice determines and your decisions determine the outcome all right now in a true class system that is how it works some people say that we aren't in a true class system because you know there's a lot of people out there that don't have the chance to have a job or and, and, and I, I'm not here to, to debate any of that. I'm here to talk about true class systems and true caste systems um, and, and talk about what it was like in the iron and bronze and iron age. All right. Now, I also wrote that caste systems were implemented to encourage each person uh, of that caste to enhance their ability. What do I mean by this? So while you have the class system on one side and where you reach different ranks based on your ability or inability, you can move upward or you could go lower um, depending on your choices. All right. In a, in a, in a, um, in a caste system, you stayed in that tier, but you were able to move up within that tier. So for example, if you were someone who played the piano, okay. Um, you would for 20 years, 30 years, learn that piano inside and out so that you could play it with proficiency, right? And know it really well. And then even then go on to, to create your own music. That's sort of what 
a caste system is. So a lot of people say, well, you know, what about Pavlov's dogs? And, you know, wouldn't a caste system drive one out of it? Wouldn't a caste system drive one away from that? Wouldn't a caste system say, no, you, there is no way to move? Caste systems don't say, and within those tiers say, you can't move. Caste systems simply say that you're within this tier, make the very best of it. Be the very best you can be within that specific caste. Be the very best you can be within that specific tier. But with contrast, the class system is based on steps to get to an objective, to get to a goal. You don't, you do have that within the, the, the caste system, but you have it on a wider scale within a class system, okay? Because within a class system, your steps, objectives, and goals lead you to a better socioeconomic class or caste or level. Um, I also wrote that down that additionally in a caste system, one doors both merit and time in order to move upward for additional merit, reward, and privilege that come with other benefits. So as you get higher, more benefits happen. You see those benefits from someone that's higher, and you say, wow, I wish to aspire to that. That's exactly what the caste system is. That's exactly what the class, the class system is. Whereas in a caste system, you may see a person who started playing the piano at the age of say 10 and then later and later and later got really really good at it and then are very proficient at it and are able to make their own music and then but still are in that same tier and that you aspire to be that as well so that in both systems there is achievability in both systems there is launchability in both systems there are those things that motivate you to get better at a specific thing. But more importantly, the difference is that in the class system, there is no, there, there is no glass ceiling. Okay. There is no glass ceiling in a cast system. There is definitely a concrete ceiling. Let's say that. All right. Now, you, you know, I, I want to talk to you a little bit more um, about this because back in the Bronze Age and back in the Iron Age, there were also things that sort of alluded to um, names of caste systems. And for the Iron Age and the Bronze Age, it's called the Gorset, G-O-R-S-E-D-D. And that would have been, if you will, the caste system of the Bronze and Iron Age Druids. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to uh, the next video we do. And uh, we hope you learned something. If there are any questions, please leave them in the uh, comments. Um, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. Hopefully you guys like this. I, I think that it was uh, pretty informative. Um, and I also hope that you guys um, are learning something. Uh, this is uh, Druidic Culture and Civilization, where we spit, where we simply talk about what we simply talk about um, the the um, we we simply talk about the the the, the history, if you will. Um, there is no magic in here. There is no you know uh, yeah, yeah, occult thinking. There is no like um, conspiracy theories or any of that kind of thing. What ifs. This is basic facts. Where do you get all this information? Um, and that comes from just studying different things. When you learn Druidic culture and civilization, you want to learn about what it is, what it is. You want to learn about what it is that helps individuals learn about what they're passionate about. And for me, you can't really truly understand who the Druids were unless you begin to understand where they were and when they were. I always say asking what is a Druid might not necessarily be the right question, but when, what, how, why, 
those are the questions we might want to answer, ask because when we start asking what is, we start getting indoctrination. During the class the clan, get on, be it thus, be it thus.